a few tips for input of data and to GINT software. When users first open GINT, they'll see a screen that indicates read only. The read only refers to the user's ability to access and modify PennDOT's GINT library. As users do not need to change drop-down menus or include calculations for reports, access to the library has been secured, giving read-only access to the GINT library to users. Users can still enter data for the GINT project file and can create geotechnical reports. It is okay to begin entering data for the project file or to create output reports when you see the read-only message. Before you begin to enter data into a GINT project file for the first time, Please make sure that you are working with the correct library and data template. Sometimes users have training versions of these files loaded into GINT, which can cause confusion when creating their first GINT project file. After you receive a copy of PennDOT's GINT library and data template, save copies on your computer and remember the location of the files. When you are prompted for the GINT library, browse to the location where the library was previously saved and click on the library file. If the library has been updated since the last use, you will need to change the library to take advantage of the changes to the drop-down menus and reports. Click on File, which is located in the upper right-hand corner of the screen, and then on Change Library and browse for the correct library. GIN software should be using the current PennDOT library and data template for data, input, and reports. You can check or verify the library being used by looking in the upper right hand corner of the input screen. After you've selected the desired library, it does not need to be loaded each time you open GINT or a GINT project file. However, it is a good idea to do a quick visual check to verify that you are using the correct and most current library each time you open the program. The library only needs to be changed if there is a new release, that is, if, if there is an updated library that needs to be used or if you are a business partner doing work for another agency. Say you're doing work for Ohio DOT and you need to switch to the PennDOT library. You'll also need to use the appropriate data template or the library and newly cloned project file may not work together properly because the input items are different. When PennDOT's library and data template are issued, they will have matching version numbers. For example, 1.2. Be sure that the version number of the library you are using matches the data template and that you are using the most current release. Please click on the link to PennDOT's GINT library and data template revision history on PennDOT's GINT webpage if you have any doubts regarding the version and date of the current release. When you are creating a new project file, please clone the PennDOT data template. Do not copy an existing project file as this can lead to errors in data entry or carryover of data from the previous projects. That is, if the project file is copied, erroneous data can be carried over from one project to the next because it was not deleted. To create a new project file, click on File, New Project, and Clone Data Template, and browse to the location where the latest version of the PennDOT data template is saved. When you are creating a PennDOT GINT project file, please follow the file naming convention and publication 222. The file naming convention was established to prevent duplication of file names and overwriting of files when they are upsized to the database. The MPMS number is the unique identifier for PennDOT projects and is assigned when the funds are allotted for the project. For recent projects, the ECMS number should be identical to the MPMS number. For projects established several years ago, be aware that the MPMS number and the ECMS number may be different. Please click on the screen to view a video for loading the GINT library and for creating a new GINT project file.
To open an existing GIMP project file, click on File in the upper left-hand corner, and then on Project, and then Browse to find the desired file. Click on Open. Please see the video on the next slide for a demonstration. Please click on the screen to view a video demonstrating opening an existing GIMP project file. Here are some input tips for GINT project files. Fields highlighted in yellow are required fields. GINT will not continue unless the data is included in the required field. That is, the user will receive an error notification and will be prompted to enter the data. Users can rearrange columns on each tab, except for the key fields which are highlighted in yellow. So columns which are not highlighted on the project boring test pit, sample tab, etc. can be moved so that the user can enter data in any preferred order. The width of the various columns on each tab can be changed by clicking and dragging the vertical line in the column header. Please click on the slide and then click on the play button to view a video demonstrating the ability to rearrange columns and change header widths. Various drop-down menus are provided in the input to speed data entry and to reduce input errors. To view a drop-down menu, left mouse click in the desired input cell, click on the down arrow for the drop-down menu to appear. Where drop-down menus are used, keep in mind that some input item drop-down lists include data entry while others do not allow it. To check if the list allows entry of items other than the list of items included on the drop-down list, you can left click in the column header and click on field properties to see if you must use lookup or if you can enter your own item. You may also use a trial and error method to check if the data outside of the drop down list can be included in the input. If the list is limited to the list provided, you will receive an error message. Please click on the screen and click on the play button to view a video of a drop down list where the input is restricted to the items displayed in the list. Please, as much as is possible, try to use the drop-down menus where they are provided. This helps to minimize input and spelling errors, ensures publication 222 materials descriptions are followed, standardizes soil and rock descriptions, and facilitates the search capability of the database. If Philadelphia is spelled incorrectly or abbreviated as PHILA or referred to as Philly, a database query is not going to capture all the applicable projects in Philadelphia County. Where appropriate, additional information for each input item has been included at the bottom of the screen. Please refer to the directions provided for the input items as you enter the data. Please note that some of the input items are not entered as they are calculated on the pertinent input tab. These columns are shaded in gray. Note that the calculation of these values will either be performed when you click on Save or by clicking on Gint Rules at the top of the screen and then by clicking on Recalculate current table. Units for input values, where appropriate, are included in the column headers. Users do not need to enter the units with the data as it is entered. Please enter only the pertinent input text or numerical value. Input fields for latitude and longitude and northern and eastern coordinates are available on the boring test pit tab. Again, professional users will need to convert between latitude and longitude and northern and eastern coordinates and enter the data manually in each field. There are several online applications that are available to perform the conversion of the data. Gantt Professional Plus users can enter coordinates or latitude and longitude. Gantt will perform the conversion automatically.